From Asia News Weekly, this is Asia Now. Today, North Korean missile launch, South Korean president backtracks, and Japan executes a murderer. Welcome to Asia Now, I'm Steve Miller. South Korea's Yonhap News is reporting North Korea fired three short-range missiles late Thursday afternoon. They were fired from a location near Wonsan around 5 p.m. The report came across their wire services at 6.11 p.m. As mentioned previously on Asia News Weekly, analysts theorize one reason why North Korea has fired so many short-range missiles is that the Soviet-era equipment is nearing its end of life and won't be effective much longer. In a transparent move to deflect criticism from South Korean President Park Geun-hye following the Sewol Ferry incident, Prime Minister Chung Hong-won resigned his post. The president accepted the resignation, provided Chung stayed in his position until a successor was found. Park's first choice was former Supreme Court Justice Ahn Dae-hee. His candidacy was short-lived after concern was raised that he made too much money. A second pick... Moon Chang Kuk raised an uproar after he called Koreans lazy and that the Japanese rule of the peninsula was God's will. With those two nominations dead in the water and withdrawn, Puck retreated and retroactively rejected Chung's resignation. Presidential spokesman Yoon Do Hyun said, To prevent causing any further vacuum and confusion in government, Puck has turned down Chung's resignation after much consideration. As promised, her administration now needs to undertake many reforms and improve safety standards. The many problems exposed during the screening process created a big void in the administrative process and a big division in public opinion. Such problems can't be left unsolved for too long, so Punk made the agonized decision to reject Chung's resignation. Chung said he regretted the sequence of events and that he would do his best to make the country safer. It is unclear how long he'll remain in this post. President Park has been called uncommunicative in the past and someone who chooses to follow her own notions, regardless of criticism or input from others. Unable to fill this post, Park, according to Yonhap News, has decided to set up an office in charge of scrutinizing nominees for top government and presidential posts. I asked in the June 17th Asia Now if anyone was vetting Park's choices, as it seemed simply incomprehensible that individuals with so many red flags would be allowed through. It appears I now have my answer. To think Park is only now arranging for such an office to be created is astonishing. That no mechanism is in place to thoroughly vet candidates screams incompetency. The new Politics Alliance for Democracy seems to agree and criticize Park for keeping Chung, claiming the decision is an admission that Park is so incompetent that she could not find a nominee for prime minister who can meet public expectations. With this latest blow to her administration, one has to wonder if she'll be able to accomplish anything worthwhile during the remainder of her term, as her approval ratings continue to sink. The Abe administration carried out its ninth execution since coming to power and the first this year. Masanori Kawasaki was convicted of stabbing three people to death while they slept in 2007. One of the victims was a three-year-old girl. It was an extremely cruel case, said Justice Minister Sarakazu Tanigaki. I ordered the execution after prudent consideration. Of the modern industrial democratized nations, only the U.S. and Japan still carry out executions as a form of punishment. Quote, Death row inmates live under the constant fear of execution, never knowing from one day to the next if they are going to be put to death. This adds psychological torture to an already cruel and inhumane punishment, said Roseanne Reif, East Asia Research Director at Amnesty International. Japan's system is also thought to be extra cruel, since many of the inmates are detained in solitary confinement, never knowing if they will be executed until a few hours prior. According to the Death Penalty Information Center, 
there is overwhelming consensus among America's top criminologists that the empirical research conducted on the deterrence question fails to support the threat or use of the death penalty. In fact, 88% of criminologists don't feel the death penalty is an effective deterrent. What was also troubling in this story was the manner in which Kawasaki was killed. Death by hanging. It's an incredibly brutal form of execution dating back to medieval times. And for a nation as advanced as Japan is, I wonder why that method is still used. But what are your thoughts on capital punishment? Be sure to share your thoughts on these stories in the comments, on Facebook, or on Twitter. You can find us at facebook.com slash asianewsweekly or follow at asianewsweekly on Twitter. Links to the sourced articles will be made available at asianewsweekly.net. For Asia Now, I'm Steve Miller. Asia Now is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License.